Let's take a look at the AS350's cockpit. So we'll get up here into our seat. And right now the power's off, obviously, in the helicopter. Over on top here, you're going to notice we have our overhead panel here. Uh, we have our EPCO test push button with a cover on it. Make sure it can't be activated during flight. We have our start on and off switch. We have our vents from our air conditioning unit. We have our map lights here. You want to make sure that those are off since you can engage these lights without turning the battery on. So if you would leave these on, obviously you would uh, decrease the, the battery voltage over time. Uh, we have our fuel shutoff valve here with our plastic cover. And we have our rotor brake, and we're going to make sure that's in the off position. On this particular helicopter, we also have our air conditioning panel up here on the overhead. Now, if we look down below here, we have our instrument panel. We have our VEMD. We have our NR gauge. This is our backup attitude and uh, airspeed uh, screens here in case of a complete electrical failure. We have our Garmin display here, our TXI. Uh, another Garmin down here. Uh, if we look down here to the switches, we have our battery, our generator, anti-collision, horn, and avionics. Uh, right below that, we have our fuel pump, pedo, servo test, warning light test, fire test. We have our crank underneath this cover here. We have our accu test underneath this cover here. And then we have another GPS down here. Now, if we continue down to the floor here, we have our heating and we have our demisting knobs. You want to make sure that these are barely closed. If you cinch these down and start the helicopter, you may have a hard time turning on your heat and demisting. If we continue down here to the collective, at the base of the collective here, we have our friction knob. So we'll bring that off and then we'll adjust that in flight if needed. We have our throttle. It's in the idle position. We have our hydraulic cutoff switch, and then we have our taxi and landing lights. We have our pedals. We want to make sure that we have freedom of travel, and there's no binding in the Richard cable on the pedals. We have the base of our cyclic here. We want to make sure that the friction is on. It's clockwise to turn it on. Our cyclic grip is equipped with a lot of different buttons on here from the factory. The only one that is activated is this one right here, which is our push to talk. And then these can be configured for individual installations. Let's engage the power on the helicopter. And the first thing you're going to notice is the VEMD booting up. And you'll notice that most of the gauges are in yellow. These are all the items that are coming from the FADEX. So as they connect, the gauges will appear. So we're going to make sure that they all appear. And we're going to make sure that the appropriate lights are on. You can see here our NR gauge it has a zero indication. This is our backup attitude and airspeed. A couple tests that we do before starting the helicopter is our servo test, warning light test, and fire test. What we'll do is we'll push the servo test. Notice it's a momentary button. In other words, if you let it go, it pops back out. You hold that in. And if you look here at the caution panel, you notice when we push it in, the light extinguishes. Now we move down here to the next push button, which is our warning light test push button. We'll push that. You'll notice that the VMD goes to the test pattern. The caution lights illuminate. And then if we go back here to the VEMD, you'll notice that the torque went to 100% and then back to zero. Now we move down to the next push button and we push the fire test. When we do this, the fire light illuminates. I hope you found that introduction to the AS350 cockpit interesting and we'll see you at the next Euro safety tutorial.